Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Mixed Mo's and today's episode we're going to be taking a little look at a mount field, I think it's a 414, I might be wrong, um, the plastic one with the RS100 engine on it that are uh, known for hunting and surging. Um, I picked it up free of charge off of a friend of mine who lives just around, uh, around the way. Uh, he said, come and get it. He's got a Honda uh, with a, a rotor clutch and what have you. So he said, come and get this one. Um, it's no good to me. It's missing the airbox cover. But true to fashion, I have one in my in my secondhand spares. Funnily enough, I come across it um, today and didn't even know I had it. So that's cool, because they're about £9 each, they are. So that's cool. I haven't done anything to the mower at all. Um, as far as I'm aware, it doesn't even start. So uh, we'll put a bit of petrol on it, see what happens, and we'll go from there. If this is the first time you're watching Mixed Mowers, hit the subscribe button, whack your bell, and set your notifications to all. That way you'll be told that one I've done a video or two of them on my Saturday night weekly live stream, which starts at 6.30 p.m. UK time. So without further ado, let's get down and dirty, and let's check out this Mountfield 414. Right here it is, little mount field. It is the SP414, um, so I was, I was correct. Missing the airbox and filter, but I'm sure I have the filter somewhere for it. It might be in a grass bag. Um, done nothing to it at all. It's a bit windy out here. Maybe get a bit windy interference, but the mic will be on its way shortly. So hopefully that'll be a thing of the past. Let's put a bit of juice in here. There's no juice in it at all, and we'll try and fire this machine up. Nothing. Let's just pull the spark plug out first and see what that does. Lead off. Not a lot of room in these. And let's have a little look. Oh. See what we got. Oh dear. Torch plug. Torch plug. Only one good thing for these four, smashing windows. Let's get another plug inside there, and we'll go from there. So let's put one of them in. This is a champion one going in here. Now I like these little engines. So I have said for previously in other videos, they do hunt well, but if you carburet clean them properly, they don't tend to, uh, to muck about too much. That wheel slightly school with yet as well okay so let's now that plug in which is a good plug let's put that on it should be on let's give it a fire now see what happens Supposed to prove torch plugs, no good. So um, carburetor fix. Let's get it up on the bench, get the carburetor cleaned. It has got power drive, but the power drive isn't working at all. Got to investigate the drive on that. If not, it'd be converted to a push mower. But uh, without further ado, let's get inside and take the carburetor off. Okay, so let's have this little carby off then. So it's given to me this little mower. And I'm always a bit wary about free mowers, you know, people start saying, oh, I've got a mower you can have if you want it. But uh, when you say the little RS100 414, 
I said, yeah, I'll have that. Because um, they are actually not a bad little old machine in my eyes. I quite like them. For a little home use carburetor, a, a mower, they're all right. Got a little primer bulb to come off the back here, which sits on the carburetor. So just be wary of that. And someone's put a little fuel lead, a little clip right around the wrong way, where you can't get to it. Which is right handy. All right, bear with me. That's it, that's gone off. All right, then I can take this off the carburetor. That comes off just like so. Don't lose your nuts and bits and pieces. Um, got a fuel line to clamp off, but that fuel line does feel particularly solid, like really solid. So I'm gonna struggle to clamp that off. Let's see what I've got. I'll come right back up here with it. Cool, yeah, that's hard. We might struggle here. Let's try and clamp that off. About there, got another little clip to come off here as well. Take that off, a little gasket to come off. Gently, gently, gently with that. It may have to stay on if it doesn't want to play ball. I think we're gonna leave it for now. Um, it doesn't want to quite play ball. I've got a set of long nose pliers, which I'm gonna put just around this fuel line, give it a bit of a twist and then just take it backwards. Minding the threads on the um, on the carburetor itself, so not about that fuel line just cracked on me. But so uh, there should be enough there to do what I want to do later on. You got a governor, a throttle arm up the top here also to remove, like so. And you've also got a little tiny spring up the top. Just fish that off, and then your carburetor will then come straight off. A few gaskets to worry about. So there's your carburetor in one piece. Let's get over the bench, have a quick little look, see what it looks like inside. Hopefully it won't be too bad, but uh, no doubt the main jet would need doing and uh, a general cleanup. So let's have a look. Okay, so up on the bench now, I've got my Brucey Pinder tray out. We all know Bruce loves a bit of a baking tray and uh, I follow suits, um, good little idea. But I always lay a bit of blue roll in mine. I'm just a bit uh, conscious of what's coming out of the carburetors once I start to clean them. Just want to know exactly what dirt's coming out. 10 mil socket goes on the underside. Make sure it's going the right way around just to crack that bowl nut off. See that dirt there straight away? It's already got dirt in on the back and bottom of a car bowl. So let's now take that off. Ye yellow in colour. And my fuel's good. Uh, what have we got? A bit of debris in there, a bit of dirt. Nothing, nothing sort of essential. It is dirty without a doubt. Let's remove the pin, remove the float, that came out lovely. And we now wanna get inside and have a little look at the main jet, which is just in hiver. And they don't come out too bad on these, partly because the screwdriver I've got is actually a really good fit. That's the main reason. So let's just remove this main jet out. The O-ring looks really, really pressed inside. Bit of a tap up on the top there's a main jet there will be a tube to come out as well that's got to come out that tube it can't stay in there that's just give it a bit of a knock down i'm not quite sure that's going to come out yet so i'll push it back the other way and then just continue to tap that and see if that'll come out now you've got to try and get that tube out it's got to come out it cannot stay in there so use any methods necessary to retract that tube there it goes so look at the tube first. The tube actually looks really good, really clean. There's a few bits on there. The main jet itself has got a hole in it, um, but it's not as big as I would like. So I'm gonna drill mine out. Um, I do have these micro drills. So choose the right size one. That's a bit too big is that. It might go though, we'll see. Let's have a little look. No, that's not going to go. The next size down. If not, you can use your pipe cleaners, as I normally use. That'll go in. I'm just going to draw this out now with these little tiny um, micro drills. Got them from eBay. They're really cool. Let's have a look now. Yeah, that's not bad. I'll go one step higher if I can. Yeah, that's the one. That's the one I want. 
that's the one that's needed. I'll drill that all the way in. All the way in. That's getting there. That's going in there. And then have him back out. And you see, I've just taken, just ever so slightly, taken a fraction of metal off of that. You see that? Just a fraction. And now that hole is crystal clear. So now, put that drill away. I'm gonna get my pipe cleaner now. And just to ensure that it's clean, run my cleaner all the way through. Just to make sure we've got all the edges off. Let's have a little look now. Oh, lovely, yeah, nice big hole. That's what you want. So that's that done. Um, these, um, Little drill bits I've got, got from eBay. I think it's eBay or Amazon. It might have been Amazon actually, because uh, it's quite quick on the postage. And um, they're about two quid, something like that. So pick yourself up a couple of sets of them. If you just, if you just punch in micro drill bit sets, you'll they come up within the search somewhere. Uh, but they are really, really good. So that's through a primer bulb assembly, nice and clear. Down through the main, the main jet area. Turn a car right around two jets, two uh, ventries here to clean. One just here and one just the other side, his brother. Clean them out. That's that done. Then we want to take out the slow running jet, which would be just over this side. Let's remove that. I don't count these anymore. They're about two and a half threads um, on the other side uh, as standard on these. Get rid of that. Let's just give it a bit of a, a clean off. Right, I don't want to be introducing new stuff into this carburetor. Bit of a clean off. And then lift that, that slow running jet up ever so slightly. Bit of a tweak both sides. Don't go mad with it. Because if you break that, we've had it. It's game over. Up that comes. That's all in as it should be. A little bit of crud in there. WD-40 again, which is what I use despite what people say that's what I do and that's a slow running jet that should be freely running as well if it's not again you want to just put a pipe a, a needle through there there it goes yeah that's running it's running lovely so you can put a little a little um a little file through there, or a little drill one through there. I've got these little tiny drills I keep mentioning. This, this pretty little pink one fits in there just lovely. And you can just clean that little jet out. Just enough to get in there. In fact, you can probably go up, go up one with that. I don't want to be taking no material off. So that one there, that's, that's perfect. The purple one, or dark pink, that's perfect. Perfect. Let's go easy. That's that drilled out. Um, that's now done. I've got to look at the tube. And then with the tube, I'm going to use my files. Smallest file possible. I'm going to get a new set. Mine have been absolutely smashed mine off. Well, I've been uh, abusing mine. These are about two quid each a set. So make sure you pick a set of a cut sets of them up. I'm just going to cut mine off. I keep cutting mine off. That's what I keep doing. That's a problem. That's it. I'm trying to pick another set up, methinks, and this one is just going to run through all the holes inside this main tube. Do all the holes, and that's that done. Um, once this is done, what we're going to do is we're going to go back over to the um, machine and we're going to uh, refit the carburetor back on and try and fire it up. If it runs, good, good. Uh, but then we need to investigate why the drive isn't working. That's a completely different entity in itself. I may even do another video on it. We should see. So we get on for time. I'm trying to keep my videos down if I can. So I've just come out the round some Marquis lot. I'm there nearly an hour reach some of them. So I want to keep between 15 to 20 minutes if I can for a video. Otherwise you guys and girls get a bit bored of it. So let's clean that tube up. And run some stuff through there. Yeah, it's running lovely. We like that. So that's good, that's all done. Carburet has now been fully um, cleaned off um, and cleaned, it's all running as it should be. Very happy with that, it's coming out the slow running jet area. 
that's kind of the main throat. So we're happy. Little tiny hole down in there. Yeah. One down in there. And we're done. So that's that carburetor now, fully, fully cleaned. Exactly as I would expect it. And you can see all the dirt here um, that we've collected. So tube goes back in as per so. And the slow running of the main jet goes on top. Don't forget we have drilled it out ever so slightly. Because they do like to run lean, very lean, these um, carburetors. Very lean. And there's not a lot of room for mistake with these. That's it. I just bit slightly. So hopefully it'll go all the way down. Yeah, that's gone down. We're happy with that. We're now going to put the slow running jet back in. Yes, Mum? Okay, cool. Thanks for that. <laughs> yeah, cheers. Yeah, should be. Yeah, yeah. Well, why are you going my shells, eh? Yeah, just until she goes, they go back to school. Yeah, should be fine. Yeah, no worries. So just push the slow running jet all the way down home. Then get a little plastic screw, which is your your um your main speed. Do that up. And again, you're looking for about two and a half threads to poke out this side. So get the, uh, the plastic through. There's one thread, two threads. You can always adjust it a bit later on if need be, so no, no, no biggie. There's your float. Give that a little tiny bit of a clean. Some minor bits of dirt on there, nothing essential. Nearly out of WD-40. Trying to get another bucket load out. That then goes down. Needle goes into the hole. That sits down. Get your little tiny pin. Push that through. You can always pause these videos off if you're if I've gone a bit too fast for you, but I do these on a daily basis. So I tend to try and rattle through them. The bowl is particularly dirty. That's a bit of a clean. And a little got a little bit of wire wool here, or you can use a little tiny wire brush, whatever you've got to hand. Wire wool is uh, cheap enough to buy by the packet load. And give it a bit of a clean. You can introduce a screwdriver into it as well, just to sort of really scrub the areas that need it. So give it a bit of a clean up and make sure you clean it well off before it goes back, because you may have some iron filings in there, uh, which the uh, carburetor won't like. So rinse that off, tip it up so it all runs out, whatever's in there. Bits of dirt and what have you. Get a bit of blue roll and clean that bowl up. Okay, that's the bowl now cleaned up. Compared to what it was, it was a, it was, it wasn't terrible, but uh, it's a lot cleaner now. That goes back on. Just be aware that when you um, put these on, your feed goes in one end, and your drain plug goes out the other. Okay, just for when you um, you want to flood the carburetor. So now put your your bowl nut back on, and don't do it up with an impact. Do it up with a ten mil socket. Five one just heather. That's quite lucky. Not too tight because you'll break you'll break the main tube. Just nicely, nicely seated. That's the carburetor now fully cleaned. Let's go back over to the tank, uh, to the uh, lawnmower, fit it, and um, we'll see if I can get this machine to run. Okay, so we're now back on the machine. I've got my carburetor. Um, that's gonna go on this way here. Got a gasket there, which is um, on the back. And we're gonna literally just slide the, gas slide the carburetor on, and then we're gonna manipulate the governor of the throttle arm on and then the throttle spring as well needs to go on prior. So that all goes on together. Push your carburetor all the way home. I've got a little bit of a nick in this fuel line because the fuel line is actually quite solid. I don't have a spare, so I'm gonna cut that right about there. Just bypass where it's actually split. It's gonna be about there. And hopefully there's enough fuel line there to give me to put on this carburetor. There should be. It's gonna be quite tight. This should be. I might have to come off here a little tiny bit just to give me a little tiny bit more. I don't need a lot, that should be enough. We can now bring back in the um, airbox breather, crankcase breather, and primer assembly. And that one's going to go on here first, just sits on to the primer bulb assembly onto that one. There's a little tiny clip to bring down and put on, which is conveniently right in the way for the camera and, you, and my fingers but there's not a lot I can do about that that goes down 
Which that's got to go on because it's got to keep, keep it airtight. So that goes on. And you've got your crankcase breather pipe, so it's just behind the carburetor. So as you bring it round, just before it goes on, just check around the side here. It looks on your breather pipe, and that just sits on like so. Okay. Um, you want your two little 10 mil nuts, which are here, and your little tiny D wall. And then just wind your carburetor back on nice and slowly. And then if you very gently push a primer, but now I've got fuel coming out through the carburetor as I can see it. So that's priming as it should, which is good. It was priming anyway, but no fuel was getting up through the tube past the main jet. So that's good now. Um, I've got the air filter outside because I know I have. I'll put the air filter on, put the cover on. I'll meet you outside and then we'll go for a fire up. Right, here's a little mount filled 414. Let's have a look, see if it now run. Um, it's not fuel leaking, nothing like that. So hopefully it won't hunt. Let's see how we get on. back indoors now i'll investigate the drive on this machine because um if it goes with a drive it'll increase the value if not i'll convert it to a push mower but uh i don't want to do that until i've at least checked out the drive and see what it's doing right so um all was out petrol's out and this drive there's the cable is already full extent and it won't go anymore i've tried adjusting it and it's not having it so there's something going on uh, either with the cable or the gearbox itself and i'll find the best way now to do these um if, it, if you're running with no fuel and no oil inside the machine, up onto its bum, and then that way we can then take the blade off, we can inspect the belt, all that sort of good stuff, and you can engage the drive um, via clamping it off to see if this arm is actually moving or not. So that's what I'm going to do initially. I've got to remove these screws as well to see what's going on with this cable because you can't actually physically sit from down inside here. There's a spring in here to remove as well to remove a gearbox. But everything is on where it should be i just feel that um the cable is not doing what it should be doing so take these screws out there's four of those let me find a phillips screwdriver should have one to hand there's one and these are all full up with stuff so undo these so there's four to do and a spring to remove and then the gearbox should and the axle should just pop out, he says. Oh, my word. He's all just fed up with grass. That's the issue. I have a suspicion the cable seized inside. That's my suspicion. I want to get a dental pick into that. Get a dental pick and just scrape some of that grass out. It's right caked in there. I can't quite get the screwdriver in. That's a bit better. That's it. So this one here to do, and then two on the other side, and I'll be back. Okay, with those four screws now removed, these little tiny plates will just come off. And we go with a little tiny bend at the back. I just don't forget those. So they come off. And then there's a little tiny spring uh, just here. Uh, that little spring's got to come out because you need to, um, that's what puts the tension on the gearbox. Okay. So I can use a pair of these um, hose removing clamps because it goes behind the spring, locks it off. And then you can lift it up and see. They work quite well. So remove the spring. And then just a bit of tension on that gearbox. You might have to cut a few cable ties off in places just to give you a bit more a bit more um, slack. 
as you go down. Just remove a few of those. You can even remove the, um, the actual drive cable itself off of the arm. And then that should all lift up. There should be nothing stopping you from coming up now. Apart from the tension on that cable, on that drive cable, which is going to be that one there, which I can see. And actually, straight away I can actually see that the drive cable is actually not either not connected to the blue arm or um, it's um, it's snapped. So I've got to try and remove the belt off the back pulley. That's the next thing to do. This can be done by just rotating the blade very slowly. HT has been removed. So now the belts come off the back pulley. That will now lift up. And there you go. I think that was a the reason. There's the, the actual cable itself. And that come off of its little tiny um, peg just there. So now if I engage her drive, hook that up. Now you can see that's now working. And if you spin the spin the wheel, the axle now spins. So that's now working. So all it was was that little tiny clip had come off of its um seating. As you see a little bit of slack there, let's see that slack to jump up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the slack on the other end when we go to we'll go, go to refit it. So it wants to be there, but tight. So it wants to be about there. See that slack there? That's the bit we're going to remove, just to get away with any, any problems there. So that drive actually works. Um, but uh, yeah, just a bit of slack there. That's, that's come up. All of a sudden, that's just jumped off. That's come off its housing. So that's okay. So quick clean up, air compress, clean up, get all this gunk, and then uh, I'll put it back to how it was tip it back over and then we'll come back. Okay, so uh, that's now back on and I have um, sharpened the blade too. As you can see here, there's a bit of um, play in this cable. So now when you do this, this now engages, which it wasn't doing beforehand, the slides, which is good. And for now, pull this machine backwards, the drive now locks. Indicating to me the drive is actually working to a degree, but there's a slack here. And that's what we need to remove. Unfortunately, um, it goes all the way up to there, but in its rested position, there's too much slack. So I'm going to cut this cable. I don't want to muck about it too much because if I um, if I let it go too far down, there's a risk it could come off that gearbox again. So I'm going to cut the cable just here, right at the top, about there. And all I'm going to do is get my crimpers and then connect it so that it just overlaps so it just takes that slack up that's all i'm going to be doing i'll have a look at the end of this yeah the end of that is not brilliant either so i'm going to get another end i've got some spare ends so he's got to keep the ends put a new end on it and then we'll go from there we'll cut it to the same length that this is okay you've seen me do it before with regards to my cable fixes um that's now um take all that slack up which is now good and the machine will not roll backwards so that does tell me now that we've actually fixed that issue uh, with, with this drive um won't know until we've actually um, put some oil back in this machine and all that sort of good stuff. So let me put some oil back in the machine, fill it up. It's already had the um, the uh, blade sharpener balanced and all I then want to do is uh, find an air filter for it and fill it back up with petrol. I'll give it a tide, a bit of a clean up. Uh, might be tomorrow, but you'll be seeing in two or three minutes. And then um, we'll go for another fire up, see if it doesn't um, now run about hunting and also to see if um, the drive now engages, which it should do. Um, and if it does, then we just increase the value of this machine by about 50 pounds. Right, and I think we're done. Um, I've filled up the petrol and I've filled up the oil. That's now done. It takes about 400, 4, 425 milliliters of oil, this one, the um, RS100s. Um, bit of a clean up, bit of a polish up, looking rather nice compared to what it was. Let's take it outside now, and see if it will fire up, not hunt, and see if that drive will engage. Okay, 
there you have it, Mountfield 414, now all up and running exactly as it should do. That mower came to me um, free of charge, just come and get it, it's broken. And we drilled it out with these new, these are pretty good, these um, little drill bits. I have broken two on two different engines, so I need to buy another set, but they're about two quid each. So I think you can buy a complete set for about £16, every single size there is, I might even get that. They're really, really good, so check them out. Uh, just look on eBay or Amazon for micro drill bits and they'll come up. Um, so that little mower has now had a full service. I've got found a, a filter for it. Um, it's had all changed, blade sharp and balance. It's had a new spark plug um, and the drive cable just come adrift just due to the fact it had been slack. That's all it was. So now it runs, it doesn't hunt and the drive now works. That mower now be up for sale. and should fetch a pretty little penny because those little tiny mount fills, they do sell quite well, the 414s. I do quite like them, especially the 416s as well. They're very good too. So if this is your first time you're watching Mixed Mowers, hit the subscribe button, whack your bell, set notifications to all. That way you'll be told that one I've done a video or two on my Saturday night weekly live stream, which starts at 6.30 p.m. UK time. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I look forward to seeing you next time on Mixed Mowers very, very soon. But until then, people, don't forget, more importantly, take it easy.